This is the first course in ICEM Hexa. ICEM is a pre-processing software for CFD analysis from ANSYS. It's one of the most powerful pre-processing softwares out there in the market today. Being powerful, it's also very difficult to learn on, on your own. Uh, its difficulty stems from the fact that it, it, it takes a different approach to meshing. And uh, the, the, the motive of this course is to train the student into an, and the a new user in, in a much more efficient way of tackling complex geometries using ICEM hexa. Please note that the course concerns only with the hexahedral aspect of meshing using ICM. The tetrahedral mesh, which is much more easier to learn, won't be covered in this course. My name is Vishal Anand and at the time of making of this video, I am a PhD student at Purdue University in the US. My expectations from the student is that they should learn the modules sequentially. They should not skip the modules as in you should first start with the first module, module 1 and then go on to module 2, module 3 and so on. Please do not skip the modules. And also there has been a presentation uploaded in the description part of this video. The presentation explains in detail the various options available in the ICM CFD GUI. So you should read the presentation in tandem with the video lectures. The video lectures will solve certain geometries as an example for you and that's how they will teach you how to do the meshing. But for a detailed, present, uh, detailed uh, aspect, you should please read the presentation which has been attached with this video. So we are in module 1 which concerns with the basic geometries. We have co covered several basic geometries till now. Uh, in this video lecture here, we will uh, cover the geometry of two cylinders joined together end on end. Uh, this is how the geometry looks like. We see here that there are two cylinders of different diameters. They are joined end on end. Uh, we'll discuss how to go about with the blocking uh, for this, this geometry and how to associate, how to split. If at all, is there a need for an O grid? Uh, so the blocking philosophy, uh, which we will incorporate in this, uh, uh, in this video will uh, not only work for two cylinders joined on end on end, but work for in general any two geometries joined end on end. So for example, this might be a rectangular uh, or a cuboidal uh, shaped geometry and this might be a cylinder. Uh, this might be a, a spherical shaped geometry and this might be a cylinder. For most of these geometries, uh, the, the, uh, the blocking philosophy will be the same as is discussed in this video lecture. So let's, uh, uh, in short, let's go, uh, let's go over what the blocking should look like. So we will initiate the blocking uh, for the whole geometry. The whole geometry, the blocking will be initiated and the block will be split here at the, at the point where the topology changes, where the, uh, the larger cylinder ends and the smaller cylinder begins. At that point, we will create a split in the block and then we will create an O grid throughout the block and uh, the, the, uh, in, in the, for the smaller cylinder, the O grid will be associated with the smaller cylinder and the outer blocks will be deleted. So the, uh, the uh, smaller cylinder uh, geometry is captured by the O grid. This is similar to what we had done when two cylinders were inscribed within each other. Here, in this geometry, the two cylinders are connected end on end. In the previous video, when the cylinders were inscribed within each other, we created an O grid to capture the smaller cylinder, which was inside. Here also, we are creating an O grid to capture the smaller cylinder, just that the cylinder is not inside the cylinder, it's outside, it's connected end on end. That's the only difference, but philosophically, in both these videos, we are using in the O grid to capture the inner, uh, to capture the smaller cylinder geometry. And then here, after capturing this geometry, the outer blocks will be uh, will be uh, deleted. As I said, this blocking philosophy is not unique to 
two cylinders joined end on it. It can be used for any two geometries joined end on it. Say perhaps uh, we can use the same blocking uh, philosophy for this geometry as well. This can be a homework for you. Uh, you can you you can create a block covering the whole geometry and then divide it here and then create an O grid to capture this this cylinder. So uh, a similar blocking philosophy as is discussed in this video lecture. This this might be a good homework for you. For this video lecture, we are concerning we are concerned with this particular geometry. So let's go on to the ICM GUI and start the process. So this is how the geometry looks like in the ICEM GUI. Uh, for, for a speedy tutorial, I have already segregated the geometrical entities into various parts. For example, this is the inlet. Uh, this is the outlet. This, this one is the outlet. And the rest are the walls. For example, this is wall, this is wall, and rest, uh, rest of the surfaces are walls. And the curves and the points, uh, the uh, points are in a uh, separate uh, part of their own, uh, as, uh, as has been the convention in this course. Uh, so, uh, moving on, let's, let's, uh, let's initiate the block here. We initiate the block. We initiate the block in a part called fluid, which is not currently made, but it will be made once we initiate. The no entity selected because we want to cover the whole geometry. Apply, dismiss. Uh, the the uh, this the block has been created. Now uh, to improve the uh, visual depiction, I will switch off the association. Uh, so uh, and also switch off the uh, counts. And uh, so this is the uh, usual blocking uh, initiation. And then uh, as was discussed in the introduction. We will split the block at where the uh, topology changes, where the bigger cylinder ends and the smaller cylinder begins. So we'll split the block, uh, choose the edge first, and we'll choose the point at which uh, the split is to be done, and this is here. So and middle click and say apply. So the block has been split here. Uh, then we will uh, begin the association. Uh, we will associate these edges to the outer uh, outer cylinder here, and these edges to the cylindrical curves here. But we won't associate these edges to the curves here because the curves here they they need to be captured by an O grid. So we'll come to that part later. So let's associate the uh, curves edges here first. These are the edges. Selected and then middle click, then switch off the surface, and these are the curves here, and middle click and say apply. The curves say apply. So we have associated the uh, uh, edges to the curves in the for the uh, outer cylinder for the bigger cylinder, but for the smaller cylinder we we uh, we cannot do that because we'll capture the inner cylinder the smaller the uh, we'll capture the smaller cylinder by the O grid. So uh, so we will start uh, by making an O grid, and then we'll uh, associate the O grid to the to the smaller cylinder. So let's make an O grid first. Let's make an O grid. Select blocks. We'll select the two blocks because we want the O grid to pass throughout the geometry. Then we double click, uh, sorry, middle click, and then we select the faces here. Select the, this face. Then select the other end because we. Uh, these are the two faces selected. Uh, because we want the O grid to pass through the faces, uh, so and middle click and say apply. So the, we see an O grid has been created throughout the geometry. This O grid, the purpose of creating this O grid was to capture the geometry of the smaller cylinder. So the, the O grid edges will be associated to the uh, curves of the smaller cylinder on on both the ends. 
So let's do that. Let's do that and we associate here and say apply. And we again associate here. Associate to the curve here. Apply. So we have associated the uh, edges to the curves here. And uh, that's all. So and then we say dismiss. So uh, the curves have been associated here and then uh, we don't need these blocks because uh, the the block which is uh, associated with the uh, smaller cylinder is the inner one so we don't need these outer blocks we'll delete that and then we say apply so, and then dismiss and then we can do uh, a project uh, vertices to capture the geometry even better and then we switch on the vertices first and then we say apply and dismiss. so uh, the uh, the geometry has been captured uh, we can uh, do some improvisations we can make uh, the two edges uh, in the same line so that can be done by using a move vertex function move vertex and align vertices in line this option so reference direction will be de uh, den uh, denoted by these two vertices and vertice here will be here and apply apply similarly fourth one so the vertices have been uh, put in line one in, in the same line so you see uh, this this is a now a straight line before uh, this 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 line was uh, not uh, not collinear with this line so now after align vertices in line uh, i have been able to make all the, these three vertices in the same line to improve the mesh quality so uh, this is uh, and then I, I go on to give the mesh parameters on the on each of the edges uh, say like eight and here again say eight and then here eight it's already eight and eight here as well and on the radial edges again uh, let's go with eight so uh, uh, and the last one here the longest one let's go with 16 and say dismiss so we have the pre-mesh and this is how the mesh looks like for a better view uh, solid and wire okay so we missed uh, uh, giving the edge distribution on this edge so that's why the mesh is a little bit queer so here we will do it and then dismiss so pre-mesh say yes so this is how the mesh looks like so you see we have been able to capture the geometric very perfectly i mean there's nothing called very perfectly we have been ca able to capture the geometry very well uh, uh, but we we run into an old problem that whenever we try a, a rectangular uh, whenever we try to mesh a cylinder uh, we we get bad corners uh, bad elements at the corners and uh, so this is an old problem we have uh, encountered in almost every time we have tried to mesh a cylinder and the old problem has an old solution we create one more o grid within the smaller cylinder uh, i repeat uh, the the bad quality elements at the corner 
uh, are an old problem in the cylinder while meshing a cylinder and they are tackled by creating an O-grid within the cylinder. We know that an O-grid was created outside this inner cylinder to capture the geometry of the cylinder but now we will create one more O-grid within the cylinder to improve the quality of meshing. So uh, to do that we will do the blocking here we'll, uh, and then we uh, select blocks Select faces here. And then we, we uh, assign edge distribution. On this one, we say like four. Also on this one, it's already given eight. So we do a pre-mesh again. So we see uh, the curvature is now captured in a better way. No bad quality elements anywhere. No bad quality elements anywhere. So uh, we can do a quality histogram to confirm our intuition. Go for angle. Uh, so, so the minimum angle is 45, uh, which is uh, pretty decent. Which, which is pretty decent. And... Uh, Let's say uh, the uh, the determinant minimum uh, determinant is like 0.47. That is also very good, very much uh, acceptable. So we see uh, we have been able to mesh two cylinders joined end on end. We started with splitting the block here at the point where the cylindrical cylindrical geometry changed from a larger cylinder to a smaller cylinder. We split the block there. And then we created an O-grid to capture the smaller cylinder. We associated the O-grid to the smaller cylinder and deleted the outer blocks here. So the geometry was captured perfectly, but the mesh quality was bad because it's a cylinder. So uh, we, we took, took recourse to the old, uh, old method. Uh, we created one more O-grid inside the inner cylinder and that helped improve the quality. So uh, I guess this is the end of this video. We have been able to get a good mesh of two cylinders joined end on end. I would suggest you could practice with other geometry where instead of two cylinder, uh, we have one cylinder and one cuboid joined end on end as shown in the beginning of this video lecture. Thank you.